Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. I believe we're on part 8 now. Well, we're making a lot of progress. Uh, right back where we left off at Firelink Shrine. Um, we just got out of the depths, now we're gonna go on to the next area. So, uh, before we do that, we have some new friends here. So, remember Petra said he was waiting for his compatriots? Well, here they are, so let's see what they have to say. Oh, hello. My guests have finally arrived. I will be departing with them shortly. So, I'm afraid I will be saying goodbye soon. It was a pleasure. Hate to see you go. Um, but yeah, let's see what they have to say. Yeah, <laughs> says it all. Speaks for himself. I, I don't know exactly what this guy's deal is, but... <laughs> He's got some sort of speech impediment, as you can see. Uh, let's see what he has to say. Hmm? What have we here? You look awfully raggedy. Times are grim. The least you can do is look sharp. Don't you dare meet my lady like that. You might scare her off for good. So yeah, this is, um, he's obviously got to stick up his butt. Let's go talk to my lady. You are undead as well. And we've no time to fraternize. I have my mission and you no doubt have yours. Must not let this curse overcome us. Her mission. I wonder what that could be. Did I not explain the urgency of our tasks? Or are you so uncouth as to lack such judgment? By the looks of you, I should think not. Um, so yeah, she's on some sort of mission. Um, I'll explain to that a little bit as we uh, head to the next area. But basically, she's from Thurlin, part of the Way of White, which is a specific church. Um, so for them, the curse of the undead, right? So like I mentioned, the curse of the undead, it just sort of happens all over the place. And uh, for her, where she comes from, if someone in the church gets it, normally they hate the undead, like they try to hunt them down and stuff. But if someone in the church gets it, obviously that must be fine. It means they're on an undead mission. So they've been sent to Lordran, the, uh, you know, the land of the holy, and their mission is to find the right of kindling, which is... Um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. It, when you get it, it lets you kindle bonfires a little bit more than just ten, but the exact, uh, exact lore significance of it is, um, can't tell you off the top of my head. Sorry, this ain't, this ain't Vadi Vidya here. I don't got all the answers, but highly recommend you learn as much Dark Souls lore as you can. So, why am I here, by the way? Uh, yeah, we came back to the Undead Parish because we want to talk to Andre and give him some things. Smith some mighty weapons with one of those. Why not lend it to me? So yeah, we're gonna give him that ember that we just found. Magnificent! You won't be disappointed. I can hardly wait to get started. Uh, so yeah. I'll be seeing. Be careful. Um, I'm gonna talk to him again because if you remember, when we killed the Moonlight Butterfly, we got ourselves a Divine Ember. And we also give that to Andre. My, that's a rare ember you have there. I've seen one of those before. It's the ember of a divine blacksmith. Might you consider leaving that with me? I could produce divine weapons with a flame such as that. So yeah, we're gonna give him this one too, of course. Well, thanks for that. You've made a fine decision. You soon shall see. So yeah, um, the way that works is if you go to modify equipment. Um, can't exactly demonstrate it right now. But if uh, if I had a weapon, um, since like I said, this is a different character, um, I don't actually have the plus five halberd that I've been using on this guy. But uh, yeah, if you did have it, a plus five weapon on you, and you hit ascend weapon, and if you have the correct item, so for normal, uh, you know, just if you want to keep going to plus six, seven, eight, then you would oh hello, you would use the uh, a large titanite shard. And then now it's plus six, which you can't do on your own. But once it's plus six, then you can use that uh, the toolbox that we bought to do it at a bonfire. But to get those like you know um, milestones, those like plus six, you do need to bring it to the blacksmith himself. And if you wanted to make a holy weapon, you would actually need a green titanite shard, which is um, for using on magic and special kind of weapons. 
Uh, we don't have one, so we can't do that. Um, and so our sword, by the way, our Black Knight sword, since it's a special weapon, that means we can't turn it into like things like uh, divine and all that, or fire or magic or anything. It's just going to be the Black Knight sword, and you can only get it up to plus five. Um, but anyway, that's how upgrading mechanics works. If you're using a normal weapon, you're definitely going to want to be interested in that. So, uh, why am I here? Uh, yeah, we're coming back up this way because, if you remember, we came up here once and we went and grabbed the key that was on that roof. Um, and I never really talked about what you use it for. But if we uh, go up this way, you'll find yourself a crow nest. And if you go up to it and curl like a ball, and then wait for a little bit. Any moment now. Any moment now. I swear something's gonna happen. Dark Souls is a game about patience. Oh, there we go. Just chillin', just chillin', just chillin'. And aha! That bird, that... Oh, watch, this part's the best. Okay, that part's funnier if I didn't have my helmet on. Your guy just has like this expressionless look, just like, what is going on? But uh, yeah, so that's the crow that took us from the Undead Asylum, and it's also going to take us back to it. Now, there, uh, this is a sort of, you know, quote-unquote secret area. Um, I feel like most people that know about this, are, it's pretty common knowledge, like pretty much everything in this game is. Um, Unless you're new to it, obviously, but if not, then I hope you learned from me. Um, so yeah, coming in this way, we're going to want to be kind of careful. Don't walk down the middle yet, and you'll see why in a little bit. Uh, first we're going to clear out the area, and then we're going to go there. Um, he's allowed to, which is kind of unfair if you ask me, but, you know, he's also probably weighs a little bit less than me. Um, anyway, let's go rest at the bonfire, so that way... If we die, it's not, we don't have to do the whole curl like a ball thing again. Um, so we are going to go... Not this way. We're going to go this way. Um, this was that shortcut that we opened back in the first episode. And we're going to take it up here. And so here is our buddy Oscar. Uh, nice armor you got. So he... Remember if he killed himself. But in doing so, now he has gone hollow. Oh yeah, took out a big chunk of health there. So let's just put him out of his misery. Oh, oh yeah, he's a one rolly boy. All right, and there we go. So hate to see it, but it's for your own good, buddy. Now, killing him does give us a pretty nice weapon, the crest shield, uh, which I am actually going to put on because, unlike the tower cut shield, this is a pretty stylish shield. Look at that. It's got some fancy pattern on it. Um, uh, it also has good magic defense, more than usual. Uh, there's a few other grass shields. Um, if you remember, we have the grass crest shield, which has the bonus stamina. And there will be one more that we can find. But this is the magic shield. So if you look up there, you can see there actually is the boulders back. So <laughs> make sure you don't get caught by that. But anyway, let's work our way upwards. and. Take that guy out. And if we go this way, um, all these messages are still like the tutorial talking about how to play the game. Uh, they don't go away. I'm just gonna. Ah, taking a lot of damage. But not really because my armor is so good. And if we come around here, there's one more new guy. And if we kill him, and then kick this guy down. Here is our goal. So, um, I didn't show this when uh, we were doing the tutorial, but this door was actually locked. But with that key that we got on the roof, we can open it. And that's going to give us a very important item coming up here, which is the rusted iron ring. Um, now, I'm not even going to put it on yet. Uh, what it does is that when you're walking through water, like how we were um, near the end of the last episode, you, you pretty much just get to walk like normal through water. And it's very handy because... Um, coming up where we're going, we're going to have uh, a lot of water to deal with, and it's going to be very helpful to have that. So now, be careful here, because here's another Black Knight. 
Um, but we've uh, fought these guys before, so we know how to deal with them by now. Um, oh, or maybe not, because he nearly got me. Ooh. Let's just get him there. Oh yeah, but we are doing major damage to him. And there we go, just like that. Ooh, another Black Knight Sword. Awesome. And uh, the red Titanite chunks, you will get those every time. So if you're making a fire weapon, definitely you want to give this place a visit. Um, oh, one more thing I should mention. Um, I did get lucky on this character, and I got the Black Knight Greatsword. Uh, this is a very fun weapon. Um, even bigger, as you can see. But uh, we're not strong enough to use it. Uh, we will eventually, so I think I will invest in four more strength uh, in a bit. But yeah, for now we're going to have to just stick with our normal Black Knight Sword, which I am very happy to do. So, uh, oh yeah, this is where we got the shield, so if we continue on here, this will take us back to the entrance, yes. Um, so I think now is as good a time as any. Uh, let's just, oh god, whoa, it scared me, I forgot that he <laughs> respawned. So anyway, if you walk ahead here, um, we're going to have a boss fight in any moment now. Yep, there goes the floor. And this was the demon, and, okay, I'm dead. Yeah, <laughs> it's, this is, uh, this is an annoying fight because you fall, you take a bunch of damage, and then you're immediately under fire. So it's very easy to die, but, um, you know, it's Dark Souls. Dying is just part of the game. So we're gonna, thankfully the bonfire is right there, so really easy to get back into it. Make sure you kill these guys too, because they'll fall down and then you have to deal with them in the middle of the fight, which is no bueno. So let's try this again, and um, depending on how this goes, I may have to switch to fast roll. And okay, he's gonna not attack us, so that's good. Now, this guy's also a demon, so we're gonna do good damage. But if you notice, he's still got a lot of health. Now, normally this boss, I would say don't even fight him at this point in the game because your weapon is going to do like no damage. And he's similar to the tutorial boss, but he does have that attack there, which will let him like do a fireball. But we're lucky. We got him in a sort of on the, on the defense here, so that's good. When he starts attacking, it can be... Uh, it can be very bad when he starts like shooting those fireballs, because he's got another one where he like launches the explosion a little bit in front of him, and then that's when you get cornered. Because then you start backing up, and then he keeps doing it again and again, and then the next thing you know, oh, that was it right there. Oh wow, yeah. So he does a lot of damage. So let's just heal up. Oh god, yep, direct hit. Let's see if we can. Yep, get over here, dodge the attack, heal up. And we nearly got him. But yeah, be very careful with this boss. Mm -mm. Yeah, see, this is this is actually the ideal scenario where he just gets... Oh, if you don't whiff it, that is. You can just get him sort of in a loop like that, doing the same attack. And it's a lot more manageable. Yeah, sorry, I know, <laughs> riveting dialogue here, but I do have to focus, otherwise I could mess this up and die. One more, one more. There we go. All right, that wasn't too bad. Only died once. Could have been a lot worse. And ooh, I haven't equipped well. What is it yet on this guy? Let me just do that. Very, very important thing to do. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> awesome. So we uh. We got a Humanity and Homeward Bone, and more importantly, we got ourselves a Tight Knight Slab. Um, now, we don't have to use that anytime soon, but that's going to let us... That you, you need to use that for your final weapon upgrade um, to get it to plus 15. Um, obviously, we're a bit of a ways away from that, so we're not going to worry about that just yet, but while we're here and while I had this Black Knight weapon, I figured uh may as well take him out. So, speaking of Black Knights, let's see if I can parry this guy. There we go. Oh yeah. Maybe get him with the backstab. Yep. So yeah, if you uh, if you have enough firepower and you know how to deal with these guys, they go down real easily. Um, now we have one more item to pick up. Now uh, this is where we started the game. 
and we're going to find a peculiar doll. Now, it's hard to say who put that there, but it's here, so we uh, we took it. And it's uh, that's going to be an item that's going to let us access another secret area down the road. Um, we're, that's, again, you know, not anytime soon. I'll mention it when we get there, but um, yeah, that's just about does it for this area. Um, there is still the uh, the cr crows that you can trade with, which I'm not, I don't think I showed those off, so I'll do that on the way out. But um, before we do that, let me just quickly level up here. Um, got a lot of options. Maybe I'll uh, get my strength topped off, that way I can use that sword. Let's see if I equip the Black Knight Greatsword. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so this is a, this is a big boy sword. <laughs> and this has a really fun strong attack. You sort of like do this swinging turnaround. Oh yeah. Very satisfying if you can ever land that. Um, it is a bit heavy though, and it's not actually upgraded, so... I'm not sure if that was the wisest decision. But um, either way, 24 strength and... Uh, I think we're actually going to need 20 dexterity. I'll, I'll have to double check. Um, it could be 18, is what we're going to need for our final build. So we're done leveling up those stats. So from here on out, it'll be probably just be vitality and endurance for a little bit. Um, but we do need to start getting our intelligence and faith up as well. Uh, 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 oh yeah, see what I mean? See, look, that nearly got me. Just, let me just heal. Just I'm, I'm paranoid about these fire guys. So this one, one left, one left. Yep. Just quickly round up and ah, uh, got him. Nice. Okay, so like I said, that does it for the asylum. There is, however, over here, another nest. And if we go up to it, um, if we go up to it, all right. Well, they don't want to talk. But anyway, if you drop special items, uh, one of which being that rubbish that we found back in episode 2. Um, down here. So if we drop it, and then we hit quit and reload, then you'll see here that we'll have a different item. You, you, give me warm, give me soft, and if we did that, we got a Titanite chunk. So, uh, yeah. Um, if you look up online, there's about somewhere between one or two dozen um, items that you can leave there, and then you'll get something useful in exchange. Um, and each trade you can do once. Um, okay, I should be able to curl up. Let me, <laughs> let me quit and reload again. It's weird. This place isn't normally that glitchy, but it doesn't want to cooperate right now. Um, so yeah, if you come up to here, you should... Yeah, there we go. Okay. Just worried there for a second. Uh, because we can't, we can't teleport yet. And we would have been stuck here if we couldn't curl up like a ball. But anyway, off we go. And she's going to take us back to a good old Firelink Shrine. She's gonna drop us off up here, which is a little bit annoying because now we gotta scale our way down. But you know what? It's just more fun, right? Let's do a little jump, B jump. Down this way, and here we are. Um. So what I think I'm gonna do is. Oh, help as always. You can actually use him to upgrade your Pyromancy Flame. He'll just take some souls, and uh, you can get it up a few levels. And so the nice thing about Pyromancy, which I didn't really talk about, is that it's it's a form of sort of um, spells, I guess you could say, or magic, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the three in the game being Miracles, Sorceries, and Pyromancy. And so if you... In order to use Sorcery, you need to get your Intelligence up, and in order to use Miracles, you got to get your Faith up. But with Pyromancy, there's no stat requirements, which means you can just throw it onto any build you like, and you're good to go. Um, so yeah, we're all decked out, 
Um, like I said, we're preparing for a journey to the depths, which um, we did. We went to the asylum, we talked to some NPCs, we did everything we gotta do. So I'm gonna meet you back down in the depths, um, since we've already seen this journey, and uh, no need to make you go through it again. Alrighty, and we're back. Uh, this is the door from the depths after we killed the demon, if you remember. And we're just gonna continue on. Now, uh, we are approaching the end of the episode here, so I do kind of want to just quickly get to the next checkpoint and then call it a day. So we're just gonna... nothing more to see here. We've already done this. Um, only thing worth noting is I did forget to <laughs> make myself human for this next part, which I want to do. So I did have to run back and do that. Um, but otherwise we're just, you know, same thing. Just fighting our way through all the enemies that respawn. And if we come this way, ooh, got some humanity there. Very nice. Let's take him out. And yeah. So let's get him. And I guess this will be a good time to quickly showcase the uh, the rusted iron ring. So if we wear it, as you can see, we can move through water. Um, last episode, when we were here, we were moving very slow as you would expect someone to move in a full suit of armor through knee-high water. Um, so yeah, that's a, it's a very it's a very helpful item in very specific cases, but you want to make sure to not wear it when you don't need it, because otherwise it's doing absolutely nothing for you. So uh, yeah, moving on over here. Uh, I'm going to top off my health real quick. So through this door... We're going to find ourselves right here. So here's an item, but up there is um, something really gross looking. And it always, yep, it always gets me. <laughs> this thing here will just land on you and um, give you a nice suck right there. And do a bunch of damage. And these guys are really annoying because they, uh, are, they have a lot of health. And they don't take very much damage from uh, conventional weapons. But if you have anything fire-based, then it's going to kill them really quick. So these guys can kill them, no problem, but you know they're all on the same team, of course. And if we wait on through here... Uh, doo -doo -doo, down this way, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, we got a whole hallway to get through, so let's just run, not think about it. Oh, God. Oh, okay, yep, that didn't go too well. Luckily, the rest of them fell. So we should be able to just sort of run past here. Uh, let's take him out. And right here, we have ourselves uh, a locked door. Um, that's right. <laughs> Normally if you have the master key, you can uh, go through there. I don't, so now we gotta, we're gonna have to improvise here. So if we go this way, um, oh yeah, so this is a great place to uh, farm humanity, by the way. Ah. Since these rats um, can drop it. Uh, so right here is a great X. Uh, we did find one of those when we killed the Veronique Knight back in the Undead Parish. Uh, watch out for this box here, by the way. Um, so yeah, the reason why this is a good spot to farm from humanity is because you had that big group of rats, and then you got another right here. And then, uh, yeah, it'll make more sense in a moment here. Because, oh yeah, so that's a, that's a big rat. Right here we can find the sewer chamber key. And that's gonna let us open that door, if I remember correctly. Like I said, normally I'm always using the master key, so I'm actually not too familiar with which doors do or don't open with it. Um, oh wow, he followed us all the way down here. Um, so yeah, that, there we go. So inside of here, we're gonna find a bonfire. And so that's why I said it's a good farming spot, because you can just kill them in 30 seconds, run back here, do it again, and repeat. But uh, yeah, this seems like a pretty good stopping point. Um, you know, we waded through the depths, uh, don't have enough to level up, but we are, we have begun our, our, dis our journey, our descent to madness. So uh, for now, that's gonna be it for this episode. 
and we'll uh, we'll pick up right where we left off here because um, there's actually not many places for me to wander off to so won't be uh, starting anywhere else which I don't think I've done that too many times pretty sure I've started each episode where the last one ended um, so yeah either way oh, now I'm rambling <laughs> that's how you know it's really the end uh, so that's gonna be it guys take care I hope you enjoyed the episode and as always thank you so much for watching take it easy